Well, you folks really do seem to love requesting vehicles that I have no idea about. This build request today comes from the gaming bread and Jacob Henson and the third person whose comment I can no longer find, so whatever, and is Mario's Odyssey, the airship from the game Mario Odyssey, which I've never played. Much like Sonic, this isn't due to harboring any ill will against the franchise, I just haven't played a console based Mario game since the Wii, and since we here at the Grim and Grin Studios don't currently own a Switch, we're not exactly rushing out to get the game. I am however insanely jealous of all of those who are playing it, it looks great. And so as I warn for Tails by playing the Tornado, I must point out that I'm basing all of my knowledge of this vehicle from the trailer of the game, I've not played the game myself, so I apologise if I miss out important details or important functionality, I can only go by what I've seen. Also fair warning that this is definitely not the best build I've ever done. It's not the worst I've ever done, but it's definitely not the best. It's sort of up there with the Power Ranger Zords I did, where it looks okay, just a little bit derpy. But enough of these warnings, let's get talking about the build. So Mario's Odyssey, it's a pretty difficult challenge to build because it's rounded and if you've ever tried to build a rounded object in a game that uses mostly squares, you know it's quite difficult. I ran into the same problem when building the Enterprise and also because it's actually pretty detailed. This means that in order to get the details, it had to be quite large, in fact it actually utilises the size glitch and also had to push the path limit to its fullest. If you watch the grim builds of this vehicle, you know it is one of the things I had the most trouble with throughout the entire build of the vehicle, constantly going back to rebuild it, is the actual upward extension of the hat part. It was really difficult to get the nuanced cartoony wave that you see in the actual game, because it really seems that in nuts and bolts, a one block width difference will change it from looking like a bowler to a stovepipe, but never really gives it that top hat look. Although at this point, it looks more like a chef hat than anything else. Towards the end of the build, I was slightly more happy with how it turned out, but I was never entirely satisfied with it. Also, you'll notice as the build continues, I use up every trick in the book trying to extend the part limit. By the end of this build, every single tray is used excluding the large boxes, and every single large and medium ammo, and even the large fuels. If I could hold anything together with less pieces, I endeavoured to do so, in order to give me just a couple more blocks to try to shape Mario's hat. I tried to achieve details like the lamp, the flag, the windows and the light as best I could, and I think they turned out okay as long as you look at them from a distance and make sure you squint a little. Maybe take off your glasses and smear some Vaseline on the screen. Whatever you do to make it a little less clear will probably help out a bunch. And of course the engines at the back, which I used engines for. Creative I know. Also ironically, due to the part limit it was easy to make the hat hollow, and it was easier to leave it without a door, so you can in fact go inside it. So that's a bonus I suppose. The contraption on the bottom of the Odyssey, which appears to be cogs or something, which is kind of cool, it's sort of got a steampunk aesthetic going to it, were not too difficult to do, they were a little bit finicky to get them all connected without it looking bulky and without using too many pieces, but I knew what I was going for and didn't have too much trouble executing it. The cool thing about these though, is they're actually the vehicle's method of propulsion, so they sort of serve that double purpose of being aesthetic and also functional. I knew that due to the part limit and the height of the hat already, there was no way that I would be able to do justice to the sail in the game, so instead I decided not to even try because it's literally impossible within the limits of the game, and instead opted to go for the Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts version and just use the actual sails already within the game. It doesn't look as good, obviously, but whatever. This however still required the size glitch, which resulted in its own slew of problems which I'll get to in a moment. And this is that moment. As you know if you've watched the tutorial on it, when you're doing the size glitch you have to take a part off of the piece you want to connect, connect it to the vehicle, and then use the right bumper to reconnect that part to the other part that you've disconnected it from, which will connect the two pieces together to the part you removed, making it longer. It sounds more complicated than it is, but the problem with it when utilising sails, is that firstly the sails automatically stand themselves up in the editor, and if you remove a part from the bottom of the sails, the sails bring themselves down to the bottom of the editor, pushing the part you removed through the floor of the game world. This might be able to be utilised for something interesting at some point, but at this moment it's just a pain in the bottom. So there you have it, bonus out of bounds glitch for all of you. And if you build the sails laying flat, they just don't connect. How annoying is that? 
So I went for the standing up sails and ended up getting around this in the editor by doing the size glitch in a cheeky way in which you actually tweak the game in a slightly different way by putting the part you would disconnect on the main part of the vehicle, going into the test arena, coming back, taking it off and putting it on the new part of the vehicle and going in, and it seems to still retain that memory, and so by holding the right bumper it will allow you to connect it anyway, even though you've not actually done the size glitch while in active gameplay. So there you have it. Bonus size glitch for all of you, aren't you getting lots of bonuses here? It must be getting close to Christmas. And while you obviously can't do this in the actual game world, I instead got around the problem of it being pushed through the map by assembling the sail while in water, so rather than it getting pushed out of bounds, it just got pushed a little bit more underwater. Luckily it doesn't need to breathe. And so once coloured, and once done reshaping basically everything over and over again, I've got it to a point that I'm relatively happy with. It's, as I said, not exactly perfect, which is why I've deemed to call it Mario's Iliad, because it's not quite as polished and not quite as fully realised as the Odyssey. That's a classic joke for all of you out there. I think overall I'd probably give it a C+, because it's kind of like the drunken scribble of an unguessed round of Pictionary. No one would probably know what it is from just looking at it, but once you're told what it's supposed to be, you'd probably be like, oh yeah. I sort of see it. And so with all of that said and done, thanks for watching, and until next time I have been and still am Grim Grindle. If you want this vehicle yourself, what will follow is the layer by layer, and tomorrow the Grim builds of this vehicle will be uploaded. It's a very long one, I believe it's about an hour, because I wasn't really in a rush while building this vehicle, because I was half watching Batman Returns while building it. Tis the season after all. And as we do go into the layer by layer, a quick plug for one of our other series, if you are yourself also getting into the Christmas season, and you're into horror, then you should definitely check out Grin's video from last Monday, which is his third annual Spookmas video, seeing him look at five spooky horror Christmas movies. You can find a link to that video in the description below, and also in the end screen at the end of this video playing.